Hello, I have kitty. You have kitty? I have kitty. You have kitty too? I do. That's a coincidence, isn't it? My kitty's gonna give the whole internet the butt. Oh, look at this. This is, this is just... Oh, you got a big ball of floof. I got a ball of floof. He's all curled up. Oh, he's just a ball of floof with eyes. He's like a tribble. Except, you know, I told this story earlier, you missed it. Sunday morning, I wake up to the most horrible sound. Haru! <laughs> oh, no. Haru! And I'm like, oh dear lord, what okay. is that noise? All right, okay, here. Here you go. You're kind of stinky. You need a bath. Uh, my headphones are fucking up. Hold on. There we go. That's better. I wake up to this most horrible. It was 7 a.m. Sunday, and I hear Haru! I'm like, well, that's new. And I headed downstairs, and um, <clears throat> I could not discern where the sound was. I'm, I'm, I'm just waking up. I'm sleepy. I don't know what's going on. Haru! I'm like, Grady? <laughs> What's dying in my home? Are you high? I thought maybe he was hiding behind the washing machine again or something. I didn't know it was wrong. And then I, from behind me, I hear how at my garbage can lid goes. Th oh no! What the fuck was that? How th the garbage has eaten the baby. See what happened was I have one of those garbage cans with the lid on it and the pedal, and you push the pedal and the lid comes up. He figured out I had Chinese food Saturday night. Uh oh. And I had a big, like, container of sweet and sour that I wasn't going to eat just sweet and sour sauce. I wasn't going to be like, you know, uh, no. Just, I put the container there, the leftover, what was left of the fried rice, and threw it out. He figured out that he, if he jumped up and held onto the edge of the garbage can, he could nose his way over and under the <laughs> lid and squeeze in. He did not realize that once he had done this... There was no getting back out. There was no getting... So the most he could do was jump up and bap the top of the lid while howling. I opened, oh, no. I opened the garbage can, and there is this white, fluffy cat covered white white. in sweet and sour and oh. rice. I mean, let's be honest. There are some takeout places that would just call that sweet and sour chicken. I did. Yeah. So I had to get a towel. I wrapped the cat up in the towel. I carry him upstairs. And the, the, the first discovery Grady made was that he could, in fact, get into the garbage can. The second discovery Grady made was what the bathtub was for. And that was a much less fun discovery, I imagine. Mm. There, there is said about the ragdoll breed that they like the water. This is a lie. <laughs> I will give him this. He doesn't claw. You look, there's no scratches. No, he doesn't claw. He doesn't scratch. He doesn't bite. But he made the loudest noises I've ever heard this cat make. How Just looking around like, God save me from the apocalypse. Well, if we're going to tell stories about gross things our kitties did this week. Oh, no. Let me tell you about Princess Poopfoot here. We call her Princess Poopfoot because... Miracle, I, I just put you down. I love the Miracle. noises she made. Miracle has these weird little feet. Her back feet are kind of way too long and they curl. We, I call them her velociraptor feet because her claws click on the floor like that scene in Jurassic Park in the kitchen. You hear her coming into the bedroom. Show them your feet. No. No. Her big no. weird feet. So, okay. All for, I'm, I'm trying to show them your feet. We're trying to exploit me. You can fuck off. See her, her weird little feet. Anyway. So because of her weird velociraptor feet, sometimes when she's burying her poop, wonderful clumps of litter and poop get all stuck in her curl up feet and in between her toes. She's a little kitty, gives no fucks. So she just hops back in bed with us and tracks and like I routinely wake up and have to sweep a bunch of litter out of the bed. But on the really good days, there's also poop tracked all along the sheets. That's not a definition of good. 
Tara. No. That's 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 the opposite of good. What so you she's, just described. She's little princess poop foot. And pretty much every time she uses the litter box, we have to do an inspection to see if she's covered in poop anywhere before we let her on things. Where did she go, Brady? That's our gross little baby. He's fucking dis- Oh, no, he didn't disappear. He's hiding. He's stealthily hiding behind the curtains. <laughs> He's pulling a solid snake from Metal Gear with a box over it. No one will see me. You just I will not be exploited. He's hiding behind the curtains. Grady? Grady? Oh, not even treats. Not even treats. Oh, no, I will not be exploited. He's in a mood. All right. Well, we have news this week. News. It, you know, when I say news, it's it's actually, it's, I swear to you, we don't do reruns on this show. We don't. I promise you, th this stuff just keeps happening. Each week, Catherine, the Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff. Bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You. And from the Didn't We Just Do This One department, I'm going to start just briefly mentioning this one because I think we've already said about as much as we could on this subject. Remember a few weeks ago, Peoria, Chuck E. Cheese? Oh, God, no. I swear to you, I had I personally was so confused. I was like, we this we didn't do the same story. Someone didn't send the same same story twice, did they? No, no, it happened again. It fucking happened again. Brawl breaks out at Chuck E. Cheese during one year old's birthday party. One year old, it's your kid's first birthday. Come on now. We see a massive fight broke out at a Ross Township Chuck E. Cheese this is in Philadelphia or Pittsburgh. Sorry. Um, police say it stemmed from an argument between two women at a one-year-old's birthday party. According to sources, the father of the one-year-old and his girlfriend were arguing outside the restaurant and the girlfriend was swinging at the father. Security guard told the couple to calm down before they went inside. What's inside? The girlfriend of the baby's father then began arguing with the baby's mother, who was attending the birthday party. So this was some straight up Jerry Springer shit. This was some. This is not where you go for the straight up Jerry Springer shit. I'm starting to think that Chuck E. Cheese is like a cover for the Umbrella Corporation, <laughs> and it's where they're testing the rage virus that will kill us all. Yeah. So what's in the pizza? What's in your fucking pizza, Chuck E. Cheese? There's fucking bath salts in the pizza. There's just evil lurking or, it, it, giant men in suits and animatronics and... Mm, stop that shit. Well, and the thing is, the, the one-year-old's birthday party is really a party for everybody but the kid. <laughs> yeah, because the kid has no idea what's going on. All they're going to do is smash their face in cake. Like, my oldest nephew, they had his one first birthday party at the local Chinese buffet. Because they were like, he doesn't give a fuck. And that's where we like to eat. So we rented out the back room of the Chinese buffet. And that cut, we all thought it was weird at first. And then we're like, you know what? That's a good point. He's not going to give a fuck. I mean, Because he's barely aware of his surroundings. With, with a one-year-old. Here's a, it's your birthday. What does that mean? You're, you're not... Social Security will be exhausted by the time you're 60. <laughs> and you are never, ever, ever going to have a job that will pay your bills, no matter how much college you go to. The, temp the planet's temperature is rising. <laughs> they don't give a shit. They're one years old. Yeah. Uh, so, again, another one from the Department of Jesus Christ again. Now, it took a long while for us to get another one of these. It took a long while, but my God, someone just did it. Woman accused of driving with homemade cardboard license plate. Now, if you go way back in the, in the what the fuck is wrong yeah. with the archives. Up the old way back machine. You will find, I think this is like 2012, 2011. I think this was like three haircuts ago for me. Yeah. Springfield, New York. 
A Sardinia woman is facing a felony charge after Erie County Sheriff's deputies say she was caught driving with a fake homemade license plate. Deputies noticed the vehicle while on patrol in Spring Springville. They say the vehicle driven by Amanda Sch uh, Schweikert, Schweikert, Schweikert I guess. 28 had no front <laughs> license plate and an imitation of a New York plate on the back. The license plate was made out of cardboard and painted to look like a real plate. Who, but not well. Not well. There were no stencils involved here. Now, if they, she had actually broke out a stencil or maybe right. maybe printed this shit out on a printer to look like a real light. I would have some respect. But no, this is some fucking arts and crafts bullshit here. The question is, is that a valid license plate number? That's not how it works, though. I know, but I'd be intrigued to know. Is that a valid license plate number? And if so, is it hers? Or does she just make up some numbers and that's totally someone else's license plate? Yeah, it's Those numbers mean things. Yeah. They're not just, you can't just like, oh, I don't know what I want my license plate to be. I'll just put a bunch of three, nine, two, five. That'll work. It's no one will care. It's somebody who works at the same mall I do because I see this car parked near mine a lot. And it makes me sad every time because the license plate is Later's Baby, which... And they paid for that. They paid money for that, which uh, you might not all know is for some reason the way that Christian Grey always says goodbye in Fifty Shades of Grey because super fucked up doms always say Later's Baby because it's apparently 1988. <laughs> And someone paid for this to be their vanity plate. Yeah. Every time I pass that car, I'm just like. Yeah. But at least it's a real plate. At least it's. <laughs> Lady. If you're breaking out the fucking Crayolas. For a license plate for your car. No, you probably shouldn't. Ask yourself, take an internal inventory and ask yourself, should I really be driving this vehicle? I mean, there's a, there's a case to be made for necessity. I mean, if she can't afford to register the car yet, but she has to get to and from work. They make tags applied for things. That, they make official ones, though. That have like, you know, official numbers on them that someone actually approved of. Right. But if you don't have the cash on hand to get that, because in New York State, it's like a hundred, couple hundred dollars. Well, okay. You are but... living below the poverty line. Like, I can kind of see where you would do this. It's not a smart thing to do, and I'm not endorsing it, but I can see how you'd wind up in that situation. But, you know, this, who is this going to fool? Because, I mean, I'm the girl that did get pulled over in a car with a expired registration, a suspended license, and no proof of insurance. Because I couldn't afford any of those things. Yeah, but who who is this going to fool, though? I mean, if Nobody. This is not a cunning plan. This is not a, a way to get by. This is asking to go to jail. Yeah. Because they're not going to look at that and go, oh, how adorable, and let you go. Well, you tried. You, you good. You, you, you gave it your best uh, effort. You're going to get the participation award. No, that's not how it works. There's no participation awards in yeah. the law. For the money you spent on the, the markers and the time, you could have gone to Kinko's and printed a fake one. True. Laser printed that shit. At, yeah, if no one looked too closely, you might have gotten away with it. But this, I'm pretty sure the cop had to go, no one could possibly be this stupid. Like, you could have at least put some effort into making the letters look like what they actually look like. A stencil, maybe? Have you never heard of a stencil? Something. Oh, speaking Mike of... says my volume is low. Your volume's low? Only says... Mike is saying that. I don't know if it's just Mike. Well, let me let Maybe me. Maybe you're just old, Mike. Let me play with buttons here. Buttons. Press the buttons. There.
There, now say something. Something. Now say I'll something. Sing, I'll sing you the song I sing to the deaf cat. <laughs> tiny cat, tiny cat, eats a lot, but she isn't fat. She sleeps all day, she cries a lot. I don't have anything that rhymes with that. Look out, she is a tiny cat. I hate you so much. <laughs> She's what? What are you doing, Tara? Why will you just not let me sleep? You know I can't even fucking hear you, right? Why? Why would you do that? I, I sing her little songs that she totally can't hear. Speaking of why would you do that? Right. Right. There, there is. You smell like poop. <laughs> There is such a thing as a time and a place. To all things, a season, as it were. And, the, you know, sexy time, it's good, it's great. You're having sexy time with another consenting person. Good for you. Having a good day. Not a good place to do it, though. The Hardee's drive through Oh. A man and woman, Lexington, Kentucky, a man and woman were in the Harlan County Detention Center after police say they were caught having sex in a Hardee's parking lot during rush hour. Brittany Pennington, 24, and Jonathan Howard, 24, both of Lynch, were arrested Monday, according to the Harlan Daily Enterprise, an article they called, quote, Breakfast with a View. So the local paper's having fun. Yeah. It, the the report said that citations uh the report the citations say Howard and Pennington were caught having sex in a 1994 Ford Crown Victoria in the Hardee's parking lot next to the drive-through line. Several cars were lined up to order. So you get up to the little speaker, you get the menu. It's like, welcome to Hardee's. May I take your order? Yes, I like uh, the uh, Hardee's breakfast special, um, a cinnamon raisin muffin and. Oh, that's a penis. No, I'm sorry, know. sir. We, we don't have penis this morning. Um, would you like another selection substitution? If they weren't looking to encourage this behavior, maybe they wouldn't name their restaurant Hardee's. Really? <laughs> that... Yeah, really. Uh, are you... Did, did you hurt yourself stretching there? Read it. It's even spelled like that. Did, did, you, did you... Do you need, like, maybe an ace bandage... Some liniment, because I think you pulled something stretching that hard. You know, I, I was going to have the pancake breakfast, but now I think maybe I'll have the sausage and the biscuit. <laughs> I, re mother, really in the fucking hearties. Can be a tossed salad? <laughs> I guess maybe is it just me are people just not much on romance anymore you know Hardy's is romantic not one fucking bit not a ton not even the tiniest teeny no I don't I do not believe the Hardy's is romantic if someone takes you to Hardy's on a first date you are legally allowed to punch them in the genitals <laughs> that is a law that's in the cons that's I did not know that that's in the Constitution Dan says some people pay extra for that I say hash brown grease not great lube Ugh, uh, Jesus Christ, oh, Tara. Careful. Even Miracle, she couldn't even hear you say it, and she's rejecting that one. Miracle just jumped and slid right into the wall. That was, it was that bad she had to get away. She could feel the radiation of bad joke. I think she was actually just sick of me bothering her. Well, that too, yeah. Oh, God. But, I mean... Archivist brings up a good point. Beyonce says, when he fuck you good, you take his ass to Red Lobster. Everybody knows that. But maybe they were going to Red Lobster after because he hadn't fucked her good yet. Well, what? You, you gotta work up to that shit. 
If 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 he fuck you start out at the Long John Silver's. If he fuck you mediocre, you take him to Hardee's? Maybe. Uh that's the scale. I don't know the scale. I don't know how you kids do it these days. <sighs> so we have th th this. I will give this guy points for at least thinking outside the box. Oh, okay. I just realized what I was saying when I said that. Thinking outside the box. Oh, you're going to see why in a second. I'm sad I said that. I'm very sad I said that. Oh, for fuck's sake, let's just get on with it. Well, Kitty's getting scolded. She's scratching on the stairs. Man admits to robbing bank with sex toy that looked like bomb. Oh. Western Pennsylvania man has pled guilty to robbing a bank with a fake bomb made out of phone wires, duct tape, and a sex toy. They do get more specific about what kind of sex toy, right? No, just sex toy. That's it? That's it. That's a wide category. <laughs> An attorney for the 36-year-old Pittsburgh man said he discovered that $9,000 he invested to cover his approaching honeymoon was gone. The attorney says desperation drove him to don an Iron Man mask and take a fake bomb to threaten tellers and rob the PNC Bank in Crafton. And the first thing I'm thinking of is Tony Stark made this in a cave in the desert with a box of scraps. I want to know what kind of sex toy. That's information we need. Like, was it the electrified speculum that hooked <laughs> to a car battery? Was it a giant dildo? Was it some kind of giant bondage contraption? Like, you got to tell me more than that. I uh, is <sighs> just after the robbery. Teller described the device using the robbery as having wires and a green light on top that appeared to be the trigger button. An Iron Man mask. <sighs> Well, points for originality. Maybe it was one of those things that's just the rubber face mask, but with, a, like, a dildo on the front. Tara. Although, why wear an Iron Man mask if you have one of those? Just rob the bank with that. I... <sighs> yeah, computer owned and sex bomb. You're doing it wrong. Yeah. Yeah. I just... Really, it... It's... <laughs> This was actually the original working plot of Iron Man 3. <laughs> Tony Stark runs into a bank with a dildo and some wires attached to it and the Iron Man helmet. He ran into some licensing issues. Man, okay. my The one thing that's hanging me up here is why the sex toy? If you're just going to strap together a random assortment of junk. Right, like you know, get a fucking old car battery or something. Yeah, maybe take apart your alarm clock. Maybe, you know... Go... I really want to know what kind of sex toy looks like a bomb. Looks like it could conceivably be an incendiary device. All I know... Well, do, do they make dynamite-shaped dildos? Probably. That doesn't they seem like... They plug shape like the baby Jesus. Yeah, they but make everything. That doesn't seem like it would be a very good dildo, because it doesn't hit anything pertinent. You know? Because th there's like, there's stuff you have to hit, you know? Yeah. That doesn't, that doesn't seem like... I suppose if instead of the wick, you had like a piece of rubber shaped like a wick. Maybe. I just, it is, it's... <laughs> oh, well, I have, I have, I probably should not say this on the internet. Hello, NSA. I have at my disposal at least 10 things that I could use to reasonably craft a facsimile of a bomb at, within my within reach right here. Because I've got I the sentence was going a different way and I was very excited. I've got I've got wire cutters here. I've got a screwdriver. I have 
this little talking bottle opener. I've got, you know, I've got a... Uh, uh, you do have a gimp suit. That's not for a bomb, Tara. And no, actually, I don't think I still have that. I think I lost that in the move. Lost. Oh, lost Mike, it in the move. Mike, you need to send him a new gimp suit. I just not... I, I'm not... I would not feel threatened... I, I am comfortable enough in my masculine masculinity that I would not feel threatened by someone running into a, a bank with a dildo. I, I would be like, well, sir, different strokes, I guess, but um, we're not giving you any money. Um, I mean, if you need a safe deposit box to put that in, we can help you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God, Tara, don't say box. I've said box enough for this. That's just let's. Okay, let's Would move. you like to put that in one of our boxes? No. We we have a, uh, a, a comedy of errors one next from Boston. 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 This fucking guy. Either... So we got a huge fucking guy theory. <laughs> material crusher theory. Oh, uh, from... From Boston... Former Kelmsford man guilty of trying to hire Hitman to kill undercover trooper. Now, try to follow what happened here. A former Kelmsford man charged with trying to hire a Hitman to kill his estranged wife has been convicted of trying to hire someone to kill the undercover state trooper who had posed as the Hitman. Isn't that the plot of the whole nine yards? What happened was this guy went out, found a random, I suppose, found a person, maybe Craigslist, I don't know, found a guy and said, would you kill my wife? And the guy said, sure. However, that person was an undercover police officer. So to fix this mistake, he went out, Craigslist, I don't know, found a guy and said, look, Will you please go? I will give you money to go and kill this undercover police officer. The guy said, sure. It was another undercover police officer. What are the odds? And even if it had worked out, you'd still have your wife. Yeah. It's not, you shouldn't kill your wife. I'm not endorsing that, certainly, but... <laughs> You haven't solved the original problem. Yeah, you're still you still have the first problem. Right. Now you, this is called in sports terms, I believe this is called compounding the error. I don't think that's a sports term. Is it? I, I swear. I, I think that's just a term. But it's it. It's, it's, <laughs> Captain Asteroid. Is anyone in this room an actual hitman? Where do you go to find a hitman? Matheson says, this guy is good at finding police officers. That's a skill. Yeah. I, would I, be like, know, like, I wouldn't even know how to go about hiring a hitman <laughs> if I wanted to. It, I, they, they're, they're right. This is a skill. Because this, this, this guy could be like, they could hire him and be like, okay, do you see any hitmen in this room? Yes, that guy over there. Undercover cop! Let's see. There you go! There you go! He could make a ton of money! He could make a lot of money working for the mob. Yeah. But I, I mean, I guess the good news is your wife is certainly going to divorce you now, so that won't be a problem anymore. Uh, well, no, she was already leaving him. Apparently his attorney is claiming because he had... Um, Obsessive compulsive disorder. I hate when attorneys do this. They claim their client has some disorder just to get them off. So any disruption to his normal routine can trigger bizarre behavior, such as the harassment of his wife. Gordon repeatedly vandalized her car, then vandalized other cars in her apartment complex to throw police off his trail. This is not a master criminal, ladies and gentlemen. Also, there's a lot of people in the world that have OCD. They don't do that. They don't do so that. It's not an excuse. No, it's not an excuse. Fun it's fact. 
Mark Summers, who used to host Double Dare on Nickelodeon, like the best kids game show ever, yeah. had OCD. That made that job really hard for him because he had to deal with kids dumping, jumping in kiddie pools full of green goo five feet away from him. And you know what? He never tried to kill anybody and he never wrecked any cars. He had his mental illness challenged in his face every day for years as his job and somehow he never committed a felony. I, so do you think Apple that- channel has never heard of Double Dare, I'm realizing. I know. So, it was the best show, you guys. <laughs> Wise Guy said, this is the weirdest to give a mouse a cookie <laughs> offshoot ever. If you give a mouse a cookie, no, that's, it's kind of a rabbit hole going on down here. I don't know what that means. So what are the, you never heard- Did you give a mouse a cookie? You've never heard the, the the children's book, If You Give a Mouse a Cookie? If you give a mouse a cookie, he'll children. want a glass of milk. If he wants a glass, and it's a story, it just keeps going like that. Oh. Is it some kind of horrible Republican allegory about welfare? Maybe. So how much you want... it sounds like. How much you want to bet this guy is sitting in prison right now, looks over at his bunkmate and goes, hey, can you do me a favor? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And his bunkmate's another undercover cop. You know they put one in there just in case. It's like, look, this nothing might come of this. But this guy, we Wait, just... This dumb motherfucker. This guy. Let's just see if he goes for the hat. <laughs> that is a sports term. <laughs> oh. So, you remember Scooby-Doo? Yeah, Scooby-Doo gone. Scooby-Doo is coming back as like a gritty re reboot comic. Yeah, I saw the apocalypse Scooby-Doo shit. But there are still fans of Scooby-Doo out there. And some of them driving in Redding, California this week were probably really fucking confused to see the mystery machine followed by a fucking hot pursuit. Woman in mystery machine minivan leads police on pursuit. Suspects still at large. She would have gone away with it, too. If it wasn't for those <laughs> <laughs> a Shasta County woman led law enforcement officers on a pursuit in a minivan painted to look like the mystery machine from the Scooby-Doo cartoon. On Sunday, probation officer with the Shasta County Probation Court contacted the police department regarding Shannon K. Terman, 51, wanted for a probation violation. According to police, Terman was found operating the Chrysler minivan painted teal and green. When officers tried to conduct a traffic stop, Terman took off in the van. This chase later involved helicopters... Speeding down the highway. So you're driving in the middle. Of, it's it's Sunday afternoon. You're out with your kids after church. Going to Denny's. You're heading down the highway. All of a sudden, your kids go, Scooby-Doo! And you look over and you're like, Scooby-Doo, get in trouble. Look, she couldn't, she couldn't stop. She had to meet up with Leonard Nimoy to take care of the haunted amusement park. She had pressing matters. Oh, for fucks. <laughs> it's like, you know someone out there was watching this going down is going like, oh, they finally got busted for weed. Like, how much pot do you have to have smoked? <laughs> I, it's... And it's totally an amateur paint job, too. It is. It's Like, horrible. that shit was done with cans of, like, Krylon. Yeah, that's, that's... Well, there goes your resale value right there. I mean, you might as well have covered it in purple glitter. I just, it... Anyone who didn't watch last week's show isn't going to get that. Well, anyone who doesn't watch last week's show was poopy head. Exactly. So they can... They're poopy heads. I just, it... This is, this is one of those moments where you you're have to doubt your sanity. When you see the mystery machine screaming down the highway... Followed by a storm of police. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think that's as weird as last week when someone found a unicorn walking around in traffic. For me, the mystery machine would be with the, I would be like, 
I think I think it would be the unicorn that would do it for me. The unicorn would do it with you. I'd be like, oh, some fucking hippie painted their van like the mystery machine. But a unicorn? Row, row, Raggy, we're getting rusted. <laughs> Ain't gonna be no Scooby Snacks where you're going. No. And just it. She's now. Here's the one that drives me crazy. She's still at large. How have they not found her? I mean, that's not a stealthy vehicle. Does the phrase stick out like a sore thumb mean anything to you? And, you know, it's one of the things that always bugged me a little bit about Kill Bill because... The pussy wagon? Right. Like, Uma Thurman is driving around in the fucking pussy wagon, murdering the shit out of people all over the place. How have they not found her? How has nobody... How has she not encountered police well apparently we have a real life example because the mystery machine's rolling around and the cops are stumped if we find out this chick's out hacking up people with a katana I'm going to be really impressed the last one tonight is a little bit of a ride I think we should say this comes from um, McCreesport in Pittsburgh, another Pittsburgh. We start with Pittsburgh, we end with Pittsburgh. Um, man released from holding cells steals idling undercover car. Now, that, that's bad enough. Let's see how we got there. <laughs> man accused of stealing a McCreesport police vehicle from outside the department's headquarters Wednesday night has just been released uh, from a hold, had just been released from a holding cell inside the building. Marco Tiller, 37, was arrested. Mario. Mario, sorry. Mario Tiller, 37, was arrested in Elizabeth after allegedly taking off in the SUV, according to criminal complaints. <laughs> oh, no, stop that. Stop that auto playing. It was auto playing. Tiller was first arrested on Tuesday in Braddock after officers found him panhandling while drinking a half gallon of wine at the corner of Braddock Avenue and 4th Street. I. Those officers noticed he had several small lacerations on his face at the time, and he stated he'd walk into the door. One of the cuts was serious enough, it appeared it might require stitches. So, they called for an ambulance, but on the way, Tiller allegedly groped a female paramedic and tried to expose himself. Maybe he cut himself on his scrotum walking into the door. No. No, Tara, no. That never happens. You don't know. I do. They took him into custody as a, causing a disturbance at the hospital. He was kept in a holding cell before be, finally being released with a citation. According to authorities, Tiller found an unmarked police jeep left running in front of the station and drove away in it. The EMT was like, I'm sorry. Oh, Tara. A vehicle. We lost you for that entire joke. Oh, no. What did Am you I say? Back? You're back. I said, I said the EMT was like, I'm sorry, your princess is in another official state vehicle. He just wanted to give her the mushroom. <sighs> Why haven't you fired me? I don't know. <laughs> Why do you let me do this? So this is this is this is an interesting Saturday night, I'd say. I mean, he's a sex offender. Yeah. That's a problem. Why did they it's let him okay. go? Why the fuck did they let him go? I'm not even worried about the theft of the car. I'm worried about the fact that he committed a sex offense against an EMT. And was let go with a citation. Yeah, that's not cool. That's not cool. And then they left the key unlocked and running because they were trying to charge its battery. That seems counterintuitive. Well, no, if you get the car running and you leave it running. Well, yeah, that's true. If you jump your car, you're supposed to leave it running for 20 minutes. But why was no one monitoring the running vehicle? Yeah, somebody shouldn't be keeping their eye on that. Station. 
Half a gallon of wine will fuck you up. I never understood why they said... Isn't the wine in the gallon supposed to be for cooking? Isn't that how that works? No, it's supposed to be for parties. Well, party of one doesn't fly. No. Neither does whipping your dick out at the EMT. Yeah, because... Unless that's your problem. Unless the EMT is there specifically to administer care to your dick, there is no reason to show the EMT your dick. Have you broken your she dick? She doesn't want to see it. Have you broken your dick? If no, leave your dick in your pants. No one wants to see your dick. Once again, that's an oldie but a goodie. An oldie but a goodie. I think that was actually our very first rule ever. Yeah, no one wants to see your No baby. one wants to see your dick. I think that was the first official what the fuck is wrong with you commandment. And it's still true. It After all these still years, true. it's still true. No one wants to see your dick. Unless specifically requested, you can assume no one wants to see your dick. Donald Trump, nobody wants to hear you talk about your dick in a presidential debate either, you piece of shit. Was that not the most surreal fucking moment? We're here at a presidential <laughs> debate. On one side, we have one party who's going substantive, substantive, substantive. They're like beating the shit out of each other on policy. Policy. They're yeah. like, well, I disagree with that bill you voted for. Well, I think that bill you voted for was really destructive to our economy. Well, this, that, the other. Well, I think we should fl fix Flint this way. I think we should fix it this way. Meanwhile. There's no nothing wrong big. with my dick. He's short and my dick's big. That, 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 this. That's that's great. So I guess the first thing we learned this week is quit while you're ahead. If you've already been cited at the, I mean, because he was pretty much like he was he was free and clear at that point. He was given a citation. If you, if you committed a sex offense and got away with a citation, you've gotten a win you nowhere near deserved. You should just go. Yeah, no, don't don't jump in. The first running vehicle you see and drive away. We've learned that apparently the police cannot find the mystery machine. So if you are in Redding, California, and you see the mystery machine driving down the street, you know what? Don't help them. They don't deserve the win. Maybe she repainted it to look like the A-Team van. Da, 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 da. You know, I finally saw the AT movie a few weeks ago. It was really bad. Oh, yeah. I was disappointed in Liam Neeson. We've learned if you were arrested for trying to hire a hitman who turned out to be an undercover cop, don't try it again. That's one of those quit while you're behind. Yes. Because you've already lost. Yeah, you're not a winner. You're no. not a winner. Let Let it go you're throwing good jail time after bad at this point. Yeah. We've learned you can rob a bank with a dildo. Maybe with a sex toy. That shit could be anything. Literally. Like every year we do the story about stuff people have to have surgically removed from themselves. So that's a wide category. We've learned there's a time and a place and Hardee's is not the time or the place to have sex. What are you dying to say? Even if you're Hardy, don't do it at the Hardee's. That was so bad. That was so bad. <laughs> and we've learned if you can't afford to get your car's registration paid for, the answer is not Crayola. No. No, it's not. Arts and crafts is a great solution on what to get grandma for, for her birthday. It is not a very good solution to registering your car. You're not fooling anybody. Not gonna work out. Not even a stencil. No, you didn't even try to make the letters look right. Like at least put in some fucking effort. If, you, if you're going to try and violate the law, then by God, have some work ethic about it. Make a little fucking effort. That's all we ask. 